my granny. This is my grandmother, and this is my grandma. Seniors are very important. I love you, Babcha. We need you. You are love. When the sun is bright, or in the darkest night, we're all in this together. I've got many friends, <laughs> and you are one of them. We're all in this together. Hi everyone, my name is Ana Gallegos. I'm a certified sommelier and a wine blogger. Welcome to this episode about wine pairings. Today we are going to talk about the rosé wines. First of all, we are going to learn about how the rosé wines are produced, the difference between the colors, and finally, the match with the food. I fell in love with wine when I was 19 years old. I was studying tourism in the Universidad del Tepeyac. Mexico City is a country that is not very known for the production or consumption of wine. But I take a class of viticulture and I never stop uh, to learn more and more about wines. To become a sommelier is not very difficult. You have to, to study a lot. And the best part is that you have to taste a lot. That's the funny part. Uh, I really love to taste. I really love to discover everything. Any kind of alcohol, wine, spirit, sake. That's an amazing world. So you're never going to stop learning. You have to, to, to read a lot because each, each day you are going to have something new to discover. What's a sommelier? A sommelier is a person that uh, knows about uh, everything uh, beverage with alcohol and non-alcoholic beverage, uh, like tea, water, uh, chocolates, uh, cigar, uh, wine, sake, beer, everything that you can serve in a restaurant. That's a sommelier. I've been uh, working in the wine industry for the last 15 years and uh, it's never going to stop. It's never going to stop. You know that summer just arrived when the shelves of the liquor store are a stack of wine, of rosé wines. So you can see there are so different kinds of rosé wines from the lightest one to the more reddish wine, dry, sweet, and also the sparkling rosé wine. Rosé wines are a category that is underestimated. They are very versatile. You can drink it on their own or you can pair amazing food like all here that we have. Uh, these wines is a terrific opportunity to discover something new. So maybe, who knows, you, it, it could be like a summer love for you. And if you think that rosé is a girly thing, you are very wrong. That's a very old idea. So you have to change that on your mind. Lots of men are right now enjoying rosé wines. If you want to know and you don't believe it, just check this one. This one is the rosé wine of Brad Pitt. Yes, Brad Pitt. He produces this. So thanks to Brad Pitt to let us know. Very nice wine. For the production of rosé wine, there are three different kinds of production. So the first one is a maceration method. A 
maceration method is something very easy. Uh, I'm going to show you something. The coloring wines come really for the grapes, for the, the skin of grapes. Like this one is a white grape. If we open it, there's not color. For the red grapes, if we open it inside the flesh, there's no color. Macerated is, uh, that means that you leave uh, the skin, pulp and uh, seeds uh, with uh, the, uh, the grape juice between 2 to 30 hours. You can see here the color is on the skin and this, this skin macerated is going to give the color. So wines that are macerated for a short period of time are very clear like this one. This one from France is a uh, pay doc uh, from Grenache and Syrah, uh, but it's very, very pale, so you can see it here. Uh, the grapes are macerated only for three to five hours. Less time, paler color like this one. More time, more color pinkish like this one. So that's the difference, that the, the, that's the maceration method. The second method of production is uh, the bled, or saigné. Saigné is a French uh, name. Uh, this method is uh, a byproduct of the production of red wine. So the red grapes used to produce red wine are pressed, and after the press, they are separated. So they, sepa they are separated and they made a little bit, a little bit more colorful wine, like this one, the tabel. So this one, you have here more tannins and more colors also. It's going to be better for the food pairing with something more elaborated. The third method is the blending method. The blending method is uh, blending or mixing white wine with five to 10% of red wine. This is not very used uh, method to production of, of rosé wines. It's uh, more like, we know that with a, like blush wines. Blush wines are like this one from California. Uh, they are very sweet and low in alcohol. Uh, um, this one, the Mateus, comes from Portugal. This one is a little bit frisante or a little bit sparkling with a, it, and it's off dry. Uh, the Mateus was the first rosé wine available in Quebec, so maybe you know it. Blush wines are um, sweetest one. Uh, there's nothing uh, bad to love uh, that kind of wine, the sweet wines. Uh, it was uh, very, very trendy 15 years ago to, to love this kind of wines. One of the regions that, that use this method is uh, Champagne. Champagne. They blend the uh, red and white uh, wines, uh, like this one. This one is a Cremant de Bourgogne. Cremant de Bourgogne is a blend of uh, white wine from Chardonnay and a little bit of uh, Pinot Noir uh, wine. Uh, this one is very refreshing uh, for aperitif and, or charcuterie. It's a really, really nice option. Uh, we are going, I going, I'm going to show you how to open this bottle later, don't be, don't be afraid. So you can see here we have a very different kind of wines and they come from all around the world. We have France, we have uh, South Africa, we have Chile, Spain. We have Portugal and, uh, and we have also rosé wines from Quebec. Let me show you that. Et voilà, rosé wines from Quebec. Here the, the cold climate is perfect for the production of, of white or rosé wines. And here we have two uh, very, very nice, very elegant rosé wines. You can see that the color is very different. But don't be afraid again, the color doesn't mean that it's sweet wine. The both wines are very dry and are perfect for the grace plate like this one here. Mm -hmm. 
For rosé wines, we have a very wide range of prices for from five dollars to premium wines for one hundred, one hundred fifty dollars. Right here, we have a really nice example of something not expensive, very easy to carry on, like this one. This one is a rosé wine in a can. This one is only five dollars. So you have two glasses of uh, wine right here, perfect for for the picnic or the pool. After that, we have uh, rosé wines um, for ten dollars. The the blush wines, the sweet wines are very very. Uh, they are not expensive, the ten dollars and less. And then you have the middle range wines that are fifteen dollars, like this one. Uh, and the Piv also, the Vengri, it's uh, fifteen dollars, and then you have the Provence Rosé wines, and they are a little bit more expensive. This one, uh, it's a Poche O. This one is a, a French wine that comes from the south of France, uh, Paydoc. Uh, it's a twenty-five range uh, wine. Rosé wine is very pale, uh, but this one is one of my favorite uh, rosé wines. For the rosé wines from Quebec. Uh, the middle range price is uh, seventeen dollars. Uh, yes, uh, they are wines from Quebec produced here, uh, but uh, you have to remember that the production of rosé wine is not that easy thing. Uh, they have to to be very professional for this pro kind of production, and the grapes are very particular. They have to be resistant to the cold climate from here. So it's a little bit more work. So seventeen dollars is a very nice price price for the wines uh, of Quebec, like this too. And also, you have another choice for the for the big uh, lover of rosé wines. We have like this one. This one is uh, two bottles of wine. It's, uh, it's a wine pouch uh, from Pro Provence. It's a rosé wine of a very nice quality. This one is only $35, so you have two bottles of wine ready to drink in the fridge for $35. Uh, I choose uh, these wines because uh, I know it very well. Uh, they are the middle price of uh, Rosé wines. Uh, they are very well produced, Very, they are, they are very elegant with a nice acidity, very well balanced, and you can find it almost in every liquor store. Uh, so please enjoy. For the service, the best temperature for the service is between 7 and 10 degrees Celsius. If you serve colder than that, you are going to lose the aromas of the, of the wine and you, have, you are going to, to lose also all the characteristics and the acidity. So please don't uh, pour your wines too cold. The best way to, to cold your wine is to put an ice bucket with half ice and half water and put it in the bottle for 10 minutes. And then your wine is going to be ready to drink. Uh, and please also don't put ice in your, in your wine. The, the ice in the wine is going to dilute the wine and you are going to lose all the aromas of the wine. <laughs> So right now we arrived to the fun part. So we are going to taste some wines uh, with food. We are going to pair uh, this uh, grace here and some fruits uh, with, this, uh, with with wines what, that we are going to, cho to choose. Uh, just let me make uh, some space. The first one that I'm going to take and to taste is this one. This one is from Chile, Monte Chereb. It's a Grenache Syrah blend, uh, really, really interesting. Like you see, it's a pale rosé, uh, very dry. So one of my, my favorite ones. So the second wine is the Spanish wine from Rioja, one of the most uh, known region uh, producing wine in, in Spain. So this one is uh, also from Grenache, Viura. Really, really interesting. 
a little bit of more uh, more of uh, color concentration and the last one that we are going to open today is the Tavel. Tavel comes from the Rhone Valley. Uh, Rhone Valley, uh, this appellation only produces rosé wines. So there is no another appellation in the world that produces only rosé wines. And this one here is really, really interesting. A little bit more structure, more full body, more tannins. It's more like a red wine than a rosé wine. Actually, I'm going to pour another wine. It's a really nice idea to open also a Quebec uh, wine. Uh, and this one, Rosé Gabriel, is one of my favorite ones. There you go. This one is a little bit different. You have lactic notes uh, like cheese with the roses and strawberry. Really, really nice. So we have here a little more shades of rosé wine. Here in the glasses you can see the difference, the, the different shade of the rosé, of the rose, uh, the pink colors, uh, from the lightest to, to the more concentrated. Now the fun moment we are going to eat and drink. So we are going to start with the Monte Chereve Rosé Wine 2020 from Chile. This one is made from Grenache and Syrah. Uh, it's a maceration wine, very short maceration. Like you can see, the color is very pale. This wine on the nose is very aromatic. A lot of uh, fresh fruit on the mouth. The acidity is very refreshing, very nice balance. The alcohol is also well balanced. And this acidity is going to be perfect to pair with this kind of cheese. Like the uh, uh, Cendrillon, that, that is a cheese from Quebec. The acidity of the wine is going to balance the acidity of, the, of, the, of this cheese. Other very easy pairing for this wine is the olives right here. Acidity with the bitterness of the olives, very nice, it's going to be very nice. For the second wine, this one is uh, the wine from Spain. A little bit less aromatic. On the mouth, also the acidity is high. A lot of fruitness, a lot of strawberry. We have, we find also the flowers. We find also a little bit of the banana note. This acidity is going to be perfect. A perfect match with the Spanish ham right here. The, the saltiness and the acidity is going to be very well balanced. And the fatness also that we're going to find in the ham is going to be very well balanced also with the acidity. The third wine that we have here is the wine from Quebec. Let's taste it again. This one on the nose is really, really aromatic. A lot of flowers, a lactic note, like yogurt on the mouth. Also a really refreshing acidity. Alcohol is low. Uh, really interesting, red fruits, uh, strawberry again, blackberry, black cherry, the uh, flowers, and a little bit a note of banana also. This wine is going to be perfect pairing with the pizza tomato sauce. The acidity of tomato sauce is going to be very well with the acidity of this wine. Also olives and the fromage, uh, like this one, it's a fromage brie. Uh, the fatness is going to be balanced with the acidity of the wine. 
And the last wine that we have here is the Tabel. More concentration, more color on the nose. More aromas of uh, tart fruit, red fruit, red cherries, strawberries, pomegranate. Uh, also, uh, we find the flowers and a little bit touch of um, of banana also. On the mouth, we have more structure, more tannins. The alcohol is a little bit more present. Uh, this one is a full body wine, so it's going to be perfect uh, for pairing with the Mediterranean food. Uh, here we have uh, Baba Ganoush. Baba Ganoush, we have this uh, um, smoke taste, so it's going to be very well with the tabel. We have also uh, the hummus, hummus that we that you can taste uh, with um, with this kind of crackers. So the the salt side of the crackers with the hummus is uh, going to very to be very well balanced, also with the more structure and tannins of the wine. Uh, just Keep it simple, a uh, nice grace of, uh, of charcuterie and fromage is going to be, is going to work very well with the, with the rosé. Uh, also the fruit, if you want to try a blush wine, a little bit more sweet, you can try it with, uh, with fruits, with uh, something more like the, a dessert, uh, something, just keep it simple. So for the finale, we are going to open uh, where sparkling wine. I told you that I wanted to show you how to do it, but I'm feeling a little bit crazy. So I went to doing something very different, something like Napoleon used to do it uh, in, the, in the war. So let me before clean all this, because this one, it could be very dangerous. Very, very cold, like you can see. Ready to open it. We are going to, to dry this bottle. Put this away. This one is a rosé wine. Uh, it's a Crema de Bourgogne. It comes from the Bourgogne region in France. Uh, it's a, a region that it's not too far from uh, Champagne. So you, you are going to find for the half of price the same quality of uh, sparkling wine. First thing to do just open the foil. We're going to put out all this to try to liberate the place. And we have to be very, very careful right here. Always put your uh, finger on the top. And we are going to take this out really, really slowly. And now the crazy experience. So this method is the Sabrage method. Uh, Napoleon used it to, to open uh, the champagne wines. Uh, with the, with his sable, after a battle, even if they lo if he lose, he say that uh, he need it, and uh, when uh, he won, also he need it. So champagne is always for the if you lose or you won, you need champagne. So here we go. I'm hoping not the, it's not going to, to explode. Huh? Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> the most interesting way to open a sparkling wine. As we can see to, today, Rosé, it's a very, very big uh, style of wine. So if you want to discover something new, 
I'm sure that you can find something different each day if you try a different rosé each wine. Please give a chance to the, to the rosé. They are very different. They are very refreshing. They are perfect for the summer and the warmer days. If you want to know more about the wines that I presented to you today, we are going to post all the information on the website of uh, We Are Only This Together. If you want to know more about wines, or spirit, or sake, or any beverage, you can uh, contact me to Anna Wine Co. That's my blog, or, or Anna Wine Co. on my Instagram. Thank you for joining me in this episode about wine pairings. Enjoy the summer. Cheers! When the sun is bright, or in the darkest night, we're all in this together. I've got many friends, and you are one of them. We're all in this together. again at the rainbow's end in fair or stormy weather for love is like a smile let's let's see you in a while we're all in this together